welcome back to my channel and another video. Today is going to be kind of a long chatty one, so buckle up. I'm going to be talking to you about the Orly Color Pass, what it's been like for me, my experience, just like a general overview and my pros and cons with it. Just as someone who has been subscribed for over two years now, I feel like I have some decent insight on, you know, what it looks like overall. And that way you guys can kind of take a look at the full spread of things and decide if it's worth it for you to subscribe. Now, real quick, before we hop into the video, I did want to say I am doing a giveaway in this video for the six piece Orly Futurism collection. Now this is the holiday 2022 collection. I did get on the Orly PR list and they sent this to me. But because I am a Color Pass subscriber as well, I already had the collection. And so I wanted to pass it along to one of you guys who might be interested. So all the details for this giveaway will be down below in the description. All you'll have to do to enter is leave a comment on my video. But like I said, check the description box for more details and let's get into the video. So first of all, what is Color Pass? Color Pass is a quarterly subscription box where you can get early access to each of the seasonal six piece collections that Orly comes out with throughout the year. And you also get some bonus extras as well. You can get the year long subscription, which is what I do. And that is $119, or you can buy them piecemeal quarter by quarter. And those will be $36 a piece. Now, if you do the yearly sub versus the quarterly sub, you will save $25 if you end up getting, you know, all four of the quarterly collections. But also the yearly sub equates to a savings of about $109, I believe, off of MSRP. So if you bought these at retail value and you waited for the collections to come out, you would be spending $109 more. So if you're big into Orly and you like their collections, I think that the yearly route is the way to go. Breaking that down, that's five bucks a polish which compared to their pricing on the website, that's like more than 50% off. Like I said, you get these collections before they launch to anybody else. They ship out on around like the 15th of each quarter. They ship out and then uh, it's a little bit later that they actually go live on the website. You also get a couple bonus extras. Usually it's like two extra items. I've had in the past, I think that there's been one, but usually you get two bonus items and you also get early access sometimes for being a Color Pass subscriber, which we'll talk more about later. So first I want to show you every collection that I've received really briefly and just talk about it because I think that it's important to see when I'm subscribing to something, I want to see examples of what people are getting when they subscribe to it. I want to see, you know, over the course of six months or a year or however long somebody's subscribed, is there variety in what they're getting? Is there stuff that I'm even interested in receiving from a subscription box? So I just wanna show you real quick each collection and the bonus items that I got over the past two years. I'm just gonna pop up photos so that you guys can get like a quick look. And I will link my Color Pass playlist if you're interested in any of these collections. I'm pretty sure I've done reviews on every single one of them and they are all located on that playlist. I will be adding timestamps to this video as well. So if you wanna skip this part, timestamps are in the description box, go for it. So I subscribed in winter of 2020 and that collection was Metropolis. This was the first box I got and it was a really strong start for me. We had six different polishes, a variety of finishes. I was like, this is setting the tone for what's gonna be an amazing and really fun subscription. The copy for the collection stated that it was like a Gatsby-esque collection and it really did feel that way. It was very, very, like there was a, like a shimmery emeraldy green. There's like a gold glitter. There was this shimmery black. They had so many interesting colors and finishes that really felt like that high-end party feel, which really lent to that like Gatsby inspiration. And so, like I said, I loved this collection and the extras that came with it was a set of pins. And I actually turned those into magnets and they are on my Helmers now. I just broke the pin back off and stuck a magnet on the back. And then a bottle of their argan oil which i love it's one of my favorite and most hydrating oils that i feel works really well with my skin so this box all in all was 
huge banger for me. I really liked the Metropolis collection. My next box was in spring of 2021 and that was Day Trippin'. And this was kind of like a washed out rainbow cream collection. You could tell right away just from the card that came with it. It had like a very vintagey vibe, had that washed out kind of 70s feel. And it really did hit the mark with the colors. I feel like typically when Orly states their theme, they really do hit home with it. And you'll hear me repeat that probably multiple times as I'm talking about these collections. As for the bonus extras, it came with a keychain, which it kind of looks like a, like a, for me, it reminded me like of a motel room key. And then it also came with a bottle of Orly Bonder base. The keychain was very like, take or leave it for me. I still have it. I I don't know what to do with it. I'm not like a keychain person. And even if I was, I probably wouldn't put that one on my keys. But the Orly Bonder base is my favorite base coat of all time. It is like the main one that I use. So I'm always willing to take a little more of that. Then in summer of 2021, we had the Electric Escape. And this was a rainbow neon cream collection, which starts to see a theme. It's a lot of rainbow something cream collections. So we had the rainbow kind of dusty muted collection. We had the rainbow neon collection next. And the neons for summer, very on point, very on trend. That's pretty common to see neon collections in the summer. But something very interesting about this collection that I don't think I would have, I, I didn't know it at the time. I don't think anybody did. But two of the colors in this collection, the purples, Kaleidoscope Eyes, which was like a pinky purple, and then Synthetic Symphony, which is a cool toned purple question mark. Those two purples I feel like have become staple Orleys. Like people love these two cream colors by Orly. And they should. They're great colors. They're really pretty colors. But it's just kind of funny to see like these two colors that just came out in this summer collection are now suddenly staple like holy grail Orly colors. And I, I thought that was really interesting looking back and, and you know upon reflection. I'm one of those people who stands those colors. So like nothing against that. I really like them especially Synthetic Symphony. But Everybody loves Synthetic Symphony. Now in the Electric Escape, I don't think that there were more than one bonus extras. I could be wrong, but I only can remember that it came with the Orly Second Dry Top Coat. And this was Orly's take on the Quick Dry Top Coat. I love Orly as a brand. I love what they do and I love their base coat. It's my favorite base coat, like I just said before. I do not like their top coats. I can't, I haven't found one that I've enjoyed so far. I've tried three, two or three at this point, and they just haven't been my favorites. They're just a little bit thinner, a little bit waterier for me. And this one, while it did dry fast, it was just because I have ridgier nails. It was a thinner base coat or it was a thinner top coat and it showed off a lot of the ridges in my nails. So I didn't care for it, but I did talk to a lot of people who do like it. So it's really just a matter of personal preference. Now in fall of 2021, we had the Wild Natured Collection, which was a six piece kind of jewelry toned rainbow cream collection. So we got three rainbow cream collections for this year. And at this point I was feeling a little bit kind of not let down because I've been, I enjoyed it up to this point, but I was kind of disappointed because the winter collection had so many different finishes and interesting colors and things like that. And then in spring, summer, fall, I got all the interesting colors I wanted, but I didn't get any fun finishes. And so I was kind of like, oh, I hope, I hope we get something fun in, in December. I hope we get something fun in the winter. But as far as like the fall collection went, the colors were so rich, so saturated. They were very beautiful. Like all these collections are super cohesive and they work really well together. If you want to do a Skittle or any kind of nail art with them, they work really well in that manner. And this came with a midi sized nail polish. So you got like a seventh nail polish, but in their midi size, which is not their mini, I guess. Somebody told me they were like, no, it's not a mini, it's a midi. So you get their midi polish and then you also got like a bottle of quick dry spray and you just spray it on your nails after you've painted them in order to kind of assist in the dry time. I really like using those types of sprays on my toes because I am not a careful walker. I like stomp around everywhere. So as soon as I paint my toes, I know I'm gonna mess them up. So I need to like have them dry really fast. So I douse them with that spray. I really like it for that. Okay, then in winter of 2021, and this was after my renewal period. So I had just renewed. I was like, oh, winter's gonna be great because winter last year was great. We're gonna have fun finishes. It's gonna be wonderful. And we got fun finishes we got the Momentary Wonders collection. And I gotta say, this is 
out of the two years that I've been subscribed to ColourPass, this is the only collection that I have very vocally disliked. I've never worn them again after I swatched them for my review. I just do not like these colors. I do not like these finishes. They are all shimmers and metallics and quite sheer and, and things of that nature. But out of, at that point, five boxes, it was the only one that I was like, I don't like it. And so I wasn't too worried about the next several boxes that I was getting. And I, I mean, when you subscribe to something, they can't all be winners. Sometimes there's going to be a dud. So I, I knew that. Plus about like half my subscribers ended up really liking the box. So, you know, there's a little something for everybody. So as far as the extras, we got a midi polish again, if I recall correctly, this time from the breathable line. And then we also cut a really big hair clip, like one of those like claw ones that like a lot of people used to hold like a bunch of hair at the back of their head. I gave that to my sister. I don't wear clips like that because I have kind of a lot of hair and it's pretty thick and those clips just feel really heavy on my head and they feel awkward. So I just kind of wrap it up in a really knotty ponytail if I need to do that. But. Yeah, it, that wasn't for me. It wasn't for a lot of people, but then other people really liked it. My sister really liked the clip. So, you know, again, like not everything is for everyone. So with that, I was a little bit nervous for the upcoming spring of 2022. And I shouldn't have been because they released the Impressions Collection. Now this was a six piece rainbow cream collection, which I was like, oh, are we doing the same thing as last year? Just a bunch of rainbow cream collections. But the thing that I really liked about this collection was it was based on impressionist art and I didn't know it at the time, but the whole year's collections were going to be themed around different art styles. And I absolutely love that. I think that was a really cool move and I hope they do something like that next year as well. Pick like a really overarching theme and then use like sub genres within it. Cause that was fun for me and I was really excited every quarter for the new collection to see like, oh, what theme are they gonna do? But for the impressions one, it was like a rainbowy pastel, but they were very muted, very pretty colors, perfect for the springtime. And the extras were a full size top coat, which it was like a brand new one. It, it came in like a black bottle that almost made it look like gel. And I tried that one. I think I did a wear test on it and I didn't care for that one either, but other people did. And it's like a $15 top coat on their website. So it wasn't like anything to shake a stick at as far as an extra goes. And then I think it came with another bonder base as well, which I could always use more base coat. I go through a lot of base coat, so I wasn't mad about that. And those are really appropriate items for a nail polish box to have. So I can't be, you know, too critical about it just because I didn't like the top coat. Okay, summer 2022 in keeping with the art theme was pop. And this one had five creams and then a silver glittery topper. And that got me really excited because I was like, oh, we've got some fun finish in here. It's just one, but it's still really cool. And the colors definitely fit the pop art style theme theme. But the other thing they did was I feel like the extras really fit the theme as well. So you got an exclusive to the color pass box topper, which I feel like if they did more stuff like that, that would be a really good incentive for more people to subscribe to the box. Because if you can only get this polish through the box, then of course I have to have that box, right? Because I want that topper. And the topper was, you know, super pop arty themed, super geometric. It was like these yellow, I forgot the name of the shape for a second. Yellow triangles looked like little cheeses from the game Mouse Hunt. And it also came with a daughter tool, which I think was really good for the pop art box because there are some pop artists that like heavily utilized a comic book kind of style where the shading was done via different dots. And so I'm like, that's perfect. You can emulate that on your nails with all the tools they've given you in this box. It was really great. So then to round out my second full year of Color Pass, in the fall of 2022, the current year, they released Surrealists. And if you watch my channel, you know how I feel about this collection. You know that one of my favorite polishes of all time came out in this collection. I think that this is giving me feelings of how I felt when I first subscribed and we got that box that had a variety of finishes because that's what we got in the fall 2022 box. And not only that, but it just, it wasn't just a plain rainbow collection. It was very much like a mix of colors and it was in a deeper kind of subdued tone that really fit with the surrealist art style. And I know a collection is done well 
when it contains colors that I don't like to wear on my nails, like red or white. And I find myself still loving that collection. Like I was like, I love this collection as a whole. I love it in pieces. I love it every which way you can get it. And that's when I know I'm like, this is just a great collection, at least for me. And so I hope that in the coming color passes, Orly does a ton more stuff like that. Because while I understand doing rainbow collections, six piece rainbow collection, it's very easy to do. And that gives you something for everybody. I feel like when you have like a more curated color palette versus just a rainbow, which I love rainbows, don't get me wrong, but when you do that kind of more curated color palette, it just, it feels, it feels different. It hits different. You know what I mean? Now in this box, we got two extras. One was their matte top coat, which I did find really useful. I like it. I'm always on the hunt for good matte top coats because I feel like matte top coats chip so fast and I'm just trying to find the ones that last the longest. So I did really like the Orly one. This is actually, this is the third top coat that I tried by Orly and I actually do enjoy this one. The more I use it, the more I really like it. And it also came with their nail polish remover, which I talk about more in depth in my review video. Again, check out my playlist, but it is very comparable to Zoya's Remove Plus, and I believe it's cheaper than Zoya's Remove Plus. And I have already used up almost all of that remover because it is, it's just a really nice one. It smells really good too. Now, the final collection I've gotten is for the start of my third year of subscribing to Color Pass. And that was the one that I said is part of the giveaway at the beginning of this video, and that is the Futurism Collection. I look at it, I'm like, it's like a vaguely rainbow collection, but not really, and it's all very metallic. So this is one that it's, if it's not for you, it's not for you. If you like metallics, you're probably gonna like this collection. It doesn't have a lot of wiggle room for, I think, like there's, I just feel like there's no gray area with a collection like this. Because they're all the same finish, even if you like a color, if you don't like the finish, it's probably not going to be your favorite. And for me personally, I'm not a metallic person very much anymore. I did find that I did like a couple of these polishes, but I know that I would not have bought the whole collection if I was out there buying them. However, what I feel about this and what a lot of other people have said to me in discussions as well is that this very much feels like Orly knows the trends that are coming. And like the Y2K vibe is coming back full force. And this is very Y2K. When I pulled this out of the box, my boyfriend was like, wow, that looks Y2K. That looks like the millennium. And I'm like, I was literally just talking to three people about this. Like, how did you know that? Um, so yeah, it's just one of those things where this was not my cup of tea, but I think that it's very on point for where trends are going. So I don't want to knock it too hard because it's all like a matter of personal preference at that point. And I did end up liking a couple of them. As far as the extras go though, I really did like the extras in this box. Now we got a cuticle oil, kind of similar to, to the one that we got in like my very first box. And this one is like orangey scented. It's really nice. It smells really sweet, but like in a very muted way. So it wouldn't really give you a headache if you're pretty sensitive to smells. And it also came with a reusable bag, which I think that this will probably not be for everybody. I really liked it because I like to keep those bags in my truck because I, I just need them to bring things back and forth. So I liked the extra. I've used it a couple times already bringing food to parties and stuff like that. But I tend to look at the extras as extras and I feel like in my head, my money's going towards the polish and the extras are just little add-ons. I mean, I know that's not how it actually works, but you know. So yeah, that is every one of the nine color passes that I have received so far. I will get three more on my current subscription and then decide again if I'm going to resubscribe. I probably will because I really enjoy these. Uh, I make videos on them. I like getting them. I like owning the collections and using them. I really like it. And I really hope we get more bangers like the Surrealist collection, because that is probably one of my top Orly collections of all time. The Surrealist collection and the Metropolis collection. Those are my two top favorite color passes that I've received so far. So now let's talk pros and cons. I like pros and cons lists when it comes to stuff like this. And so let's start with the pros. So the first pro is you get the polishes before anybody else. This is really important for people like me who are creating content because you want to be the first one to get this stuff and get your reviews out and your videos out because people are going to pay more attention to them when you're first. They see your video first. They want to click on that. And then that way you can help people make informed decisions about what they're buying. But even if you're not a content creator, I feel like there is a fun aspect and like an exclusive aspect to being like one of the first people to have something. And so 
That is for me a pro, it may not be a pro for everybody. The next pro is that subscribing to the yearly box makes these polishes significantly cheaper than if you were to buy them at the retail value. And like I said earlier, like when you break it down, it's $5 an Orly polish. I just checked their website and Orly's are retailing for like $10.50 right now. So you're getting more than 50% off the price of the polish. So if you're somebody who loves Orly, this is a steal for you. The next pro is the extras. The extra value added stuff can be a great way to try out the brand's little like nail treatments. You know, we've gotten nail oils, base coats, top coats. It's a great way to try some of those things. Like I mentioned earlier, we got that shining armor top coat, the one in the black bottle. And I got to try that with my box when in, if I had purchased it myself, which I wouldn't have because I don't pay this much for top coat, I would have had to pay $15. When their remover released, I probably would not have bought that on my own because I have like two gallons of nail polish remover in my closet right now. But because they sent it to me in the color pass, I tried it and I found out I really liked the remover. And once Zoya Remove Plus, once I'm out of my gallon of that, don't worry about it. Uh, but once I'm out of that, I'll probably swap over to the Orly remover because I like that one a little bit more. So I got to try a lot of stuff that I otherwise probably would not have tried on a whim. And my final pro is it's just fun. I love a subscription. It's a fun thing for me. It feels like you're getting a present, you know, even if you paid for it. It's fun to look forward to something. And with the Orly Color Pass specifically, it's fun because you have a community of people who were all getting the same thing and just seeing how people wear them and what they do with them. It's enjoyable for me. Every time a new one comes out, I'm always talking to people in my DMs, what we think about the collection, what our favorites are, what our predictions are gonna be for the next one, and you know, things like that. So it's a really enjoyable, holistic experience, I guess. So now let's really quickly get into the cons. And the first con is specific to if you are subscribing to the full year like I do. And that would be, it's kind of an expensive buy-in for some people. $119 up front all at once can be a little bit difficult for, you know, some people to justify spending. And it might be just difficult to come up with that much money at one time to spend on something as, you know, let's be honest, frivolous as nail polish is. And for some people, it just doesn't feel great to pay up front for something that you're not even gonna get until like the end of the quarter, each, each quarter, you know? And so not everybody likes to do it like that. So you could just then do the quarterly subscription where you just pay 36 and you only buy the quarters you feel like buying. But then if you do that, you do miss out on the more significant savings. Another con that I feel, not for me because I probably wouldn't utilize this feature, but I think for a lot of people is that you cannot skip a box or a quarter. A lot of other things that I subscribe to, you can put a hold on your subscription. You can skip a month or a quarter or whatever. Like it's very easy. You just go into the online portal and you put a hold on it and you're still subscribed, but you're just not doing that month for whatever reason, whether it's like you can't afford that month or you've got too much of something or you just don't like whatever that month's offering is, but you can still maintain your subscribed status. With the Orly Color Pass, there's no such feature. And on the one hand, I do understand it's quarterly. There's only four in a year. I don't think that it would be like logistically the best for them if they allowed skips, especially because they do offer the quarterly purchase, like the $36 single buy-in. But at the same time, a lot of people I know are like, oh, I really love three out of the four collections. And if I was able to skip it, I would have, uh, you know, and so I could see that being a feature. But on the other hand, you're not really, we, we can find out for what the colors are going to be before they launch because somebody's always finding the leak. But in theory, you don't know what they are until you get them. So how would you know to skip a box that you don't like? It's kind of weird. They would have to really change up their format. I think in order to allow skips to be possible. And then from like a logistical standpoint, I'm not really sure how that would work either because I've never worked in like subscription-based logistics. So I couldn't say how easy that would be for them to set up. This next con might not be a con for you, but it is a con for some people. And that is that you don't know what you're going to get ahead of time, which kind of ties into the previous point and just not everybody loves a surprise or a mystery. And at a higher price point, like, you know, $119 to buy in, 
Some people aren't super comfortable with that, which I think is why some people are apprehensive about doing the subscription. And in that case, I would say wait for reviews and then just buy the quarterly box for the ones that you like. I, I feel like that makes the most sense to me if you're not someone who's comfortable with a surprise. So yeah, those are my main pros and cons of the box. I, For me personally, the pros well outweigh the cons. I enjoy this. And so I've continued my subscription now for the third year. But I hope that that can give you kind of an insight into deciding whether the full year or the quarterly or maybe nothing is, you know, going to fit into your lifestyle. As far as the perks of the box, aside from getting your polishes and getting the extras, sometimes they include coupon codes. I only can remember one coupon code that I've ever gotten. Um, and then they also do give early access to some stuff. So when the Orly by Kelly Marissa six piece witching hour collection came out, if you were a color pass subscriber, you got a little bit of early access to that. And that's how I ordered mine. And I'm pretty sure I got an email uh, saying that color pass subscribers also got early access to the black Friday deals. So you do get uh, perks here and there. You just have to pay attention to your email, something that I'm not super on top of when it comes to email blasts. So I have to be a little bit better about opening those. Let me know if you guys have seen any other early access type bonus perks for being a ColourPass subscriber. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about before I wrap it all up is the spoiler problem when it comes to Orly ColourPass. This is, I don't know if it's a problem, maybe problem is too strong of a word, but it is definitely an annoyance and this has nothing to do with Orly. This is not on the company. This is more on us as the consumer base. And that is just that I constantly see massive spoilers for this box, like well before it comes out. I've touched on this on the past, you know, I'm not someone who's super concerned about spoilers, but a lot of people do really want to be surprised and I don't ever want to like step on anybody's toes with that. And so the more I see it, the more I get kind of like, put that behind a spoiler wall. Like I see people posting, you know, leaks and I see people posting their boxes as soon as they get them, not behind a spoiler wall. And it kind of totally sucks for the people who didn't want to be spoiled. Orly ships from California. And for me, I think, I think they use ground shipping. So it is a little bit slower and I live in Michigan. So kind of a distance. So like the people who live in California, they get their boxes like five minutes after it ships away from Orly. I get maybe like five to seven days later. So by the time that I get my box, I've seen about 10 bajillion unfiltered, un like blacked out spoilers. And I know that a lot of people who live on this side of the country also feel like they see so many spoilers. I feel like part of it is just like us as reviewers putting the collections in our thumbnails. I feel like it's consumers who are just super excited and they want to share what they got. And it's like, I can't fault people for wanting to get their reviews up. I can't fault people for being excited and just wanting to show off their new haul. But I don't really know what the solution is because you can't just tell people like, don't post that. Cause I mean, nobody's going to do that. I guess the only thing we can really do is if you are someone who's concerned about spoilers, just stay off Instagram around that time until you get your box. That way you won't get spoiled. And if you don't have an Instagram, great. You probably won't get spoiled at all. Cause that's where I see like, 90% of the spoilers is on Instagram. And then the other 10% is YouTube thumbnails. All that just to say, you know, that's just something to be aware of if you're not subscribed to this box and you're interested in it, you know, just be aware that you may get spoiled if you're not careful. So just, you know, be vigilant. So my overall thoughts are I love Color Pass and I love Orly and I really don't see myself stopping anytime soon. I am going into my third year, like I said, and I can't, unless they like, blow up my house and set fire to my car. I can't see myself stopping anytime soon. I feel like the entire time I've been subscribed, I've seen more and more improvements. You know, the first year I subscribed, it was predominantly creams and I was kind of like, oh, okay, like we'll see what next year has to hold. And then the next year, not only did they come through with like a great theme, but they mixed it up in every box we had, aside from the spring box, we had a variety of finishes and I really love that. So who knows what 2023 is going to bring us as far as like Orly collections. I'm excited to see where they go, how they improve, how they tweak it. For me, paying the subscription fee is really not a problem because I utilize sinking funds in order to save for things. And so I just save monthly for it. I put away $10 and 50 cents 
every single month and it just auto deposits into my savings so that by the time I think in October mine re-ups by the time October rolls around and the charge hits I just push that savings into my checking and we're done and so if you're somebody who wants to do something like this I am not going to tell you how to spend your money or how to save or whatever but I highly recommend doing stuff like that for big charges that you know are going to come just a little bit of money every month earmark it for that it makes it so much less painful when that charge hits because that way I know I'm like, oh, I don't have to pull this out of my fun money for the month. I already have it in the savings. I highly recommend this box to pretty much anybody and everybody, but specifically if you're someone who loves Orly, this is a great way to get the new collections and try them out for a really good price. And I also think this would make a really wonderful gift for somebody who's newer to the hobby or who was looking to expand in the hobby because this will grow your collection and not like crazy. It won't grow it fast. It won't grow it, you know, out of control, but it helps you build up your collection at a very manageable pace. It's 24 polishes in the span of a year. That's pretty reasonable, I think. Although my idea of what's reasonable in nail polish might be a little skewed, I don't know. But it just seems like a full quarter is a great amount of time to use and love and you know get all your feelings out about those six polishes. And then just as you're about to get a little bit bored, a little bit tired of it, boom, the next color pass arrives and you've got something else to you know get excited about. So I think that having it quarterly is Perfect. I feel like a monthly nail polish subscription while in my head, I'm like, that would be so much fun. I want that. That would get overwhelming so fast. So I really do like the quarterly format of this. I honestly wish that other nail polish brands did this because I, if China Glaze decided to do this, I'd be first in line. I know plenty of people who if Essie decided to do something like this, they would be signing up in a heartbeat. I just think that it's really fun and really nice and convenient. So I hope that answered any questions you might have had about ColourPass. I hope me talking about my experience has given you maybe more information to take and decide if you want to subscribe or what you want to do with that. And also don't forget to enter my giveaway. Details are in the description box, but I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.